Rise, Meg. The Force will be with you. Teeny! Hello my dear friends, welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all having an amazing festive season. I'm back with another news update to provide you with all of the news from a galaxy far far away and to give you a Mandalorian Season 3 update. Jon Favreau recently confirmed that the Mandalorian Season 3 will not drop until 2022 but we still have so much to talk about building up to that and all of the other Lucasfilm projects that were announced a couple of weeks ago. We have so many amazing things to get through in today's video, but before I get into it, please may I ask you to hit like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and welcome if you are, and be sure to hit that notification bell to be alerted each and every time I post new content on this channel. You can expect daily Star Wars updates from me. Now without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So we begin the news update with an article from NME and they say, The Mandalorian Season 3, 8 questions we want answered. The first one concerns Grogu and it says, what's going to happen to Baby Yoda? We know that Luke starts a Jedi Academy at some point in the Star Wars timeline, but we don't know anything more about Baby Yoda's role in the bigger story. The fact that he's not even mentioned in the new trilogy of films suggests that he's either dead or hidden by the time those events take place. But there's obviously a lot more in store for this character. Not only has Grogu just learned to start honing his force powers, his apprenticeship to Luke also means that he now has a great teacher and a chance to become one of the most powerful Jedis in the whole galaxy. What's more is that there is no Mandalorian without Grogu, so he has to get back together with Mando at some point. Does that mean that Grogu rejects Luke's teaching and runs back home? Does someone kidnap him again? Will we get a time jump and a slightly less baby, baby Yoda? So I think that final point is really crucial. Not many channels have considered the fact that we might get a huge time jump between season two and season three. In essence, it might not pick up from the end of season two, but we might go five or even ten years into the future. The next question is, what are the Empire going to do with all of that Baby Yoda blood? Moff Gideon might have gotten himself beat up, but he still technically won the fight. Throughout the seasons, Gideon's evil plan revolved around sucking all the Jedi blood out of Grogu. And if we can believe his monologue, he succeeded. But what did he want to do with it? There was a lot of vague talk about cloning, but his full plan was never really revealed. Clearly he wanted to do something nasty with Grogu's power and the likelihood is that this will still form a big part of the main storyline of season 3. The next question is what happened to Grand Admiral Thrawn? With Moff Gideon beaten, the Mandalorian needs a new big bad. Back in chapter 13, Ahsoka Tano teased the appearance of Grand Admiral Thrawn by mentioning him by name, setting off the rumour mill about how the big bad of Star Wars The Clone Wars and Rebels was likely to fit into the story. Nothing more came of the name drop and there's a good chance that Thrawn will only show up in the new Ahsoka spin-off show. The next question that we need answers to is, is Bo-Katan Kreese going to have to fight Mando? Longtime Clone Wars and Rebels fans know just how important the Darksaber is in the Star Wars universe, especially for wronged Mandalore heroine Bo-Katan. After losing the Darksaber to Mando, Gideon explains in his own slimy way that the Darksaber can't simply be given away, it has to only be won in combat. Bo-Katan is obsessed with winning back the throne of Mandalore and she's probably stopping at nothing to do it, even if it means fighting Din. Does this mean the gang is breaking up again already? Is Bo going to be another big bad in season 3 and does it mean that we might get to dig into her own story a bit more, possibly even bringing in aspects of rebels such as Sabine Wren into the show? The next one is what's going on with Boba Fett? We know from the post credit scene that he's having his own spin-off in December of 2021 called The Book of Boba Fett, but will he still be making appearances in The Mandalorian's third season? The next question is, where do all the other new shows and films fit in? The Book of Boba Fett is only part of the picture. By the time season 3 of The Mandalorian lands, the Star Wars universe will already be a whole lot bigger. With Star Wars Rogue Squadron, a Take Away TT Star Wars film, and a new Ryan Johnson trilogy, a Kevin Feige movie, an Obi-Wan Kenobi series, Rogue One spin-off Andor, The Bad Batch, Ahsoka, Rangers of the New Republic, Lando, The Acolyte, A Droid Story, and Star Wars Visions, all either announced, released, or in production. So where exactly does that leave the Mandalorian? Now that Boba Fett and Fennec have their own adventure to go on, Ahsoka being in her own spin-off show, Cara Dune being with Bo-Katan in Rangers of the New Republic, it leaves Mando on his own again, especially if he doesn't have Grogu for company. Will he go on an adventure all by himself somewhere else in the galaxy? The next question is what happened to Cobb Vanth? Season 2 opened with a cracker of an episode called The Marshal, seeing Mando fight a giant sandworm alongside Cobb Vanth. 
Cobb was only in the show for about a half an hour, but he made enough of an impression to get everyone's hopes up for a spin-off announcement that never happened. Is he coming back into season three? The next one is, will we see Mando helmetless again? Pedro Pascal got two opportunities to show his face over the whole of season two. With his face revealed more than ever before, there's a good chance he'll be lifting the helmet even more to fill in his backstory as we learn much more about the titular character. So all of these are very excellent questions. We have many more to ask ourselves going into season three. And on that note, let's move on to our next article. So Digital Spy are speaking of a Moff Gideon spin-off show. So they write, The Mandalorian's Giancarlo Esposito addresses possibility of Moff Gideon spin-off. With multiple Star Wars announcements arriving earlier this month, Giancarlo suggested that he wants a piece of the action in an interview with Esquire. So this is a direct quote. I sat there and went, hey, what about me? People kept asking, why aren't you in season two more? I said, because we're teasing you. He said, I'm the heavy and it'll take a little time to get to what Moff Gideon really wants. Moving on to the possibility of a Moff spinoff, the actor commented, the answer is yes. I'd be very interested in that if there was enough material and storyline to indulge that. But first, I want to be true to this project. As for what's in store for his villain in The Mandalorian's third season, Giancarlo added, in some ways, history repeats itself. I think Moff Gideon is very elusive and has had a piece in every part of the Empire. I think you'll start to see that and it'll be a real clue when you see the finale. So a huge tease there from Giancarlo. And so finally, my friends, we turn to an article which is called Mandalorian Season 2 Director Hits Back at Star Wars Cameo Criticisms. So for fans like you or me, The Mandalorian Season 2 was an absolutely phenomenal one where they really did justice to Star Wars after Return of the Jedi. But apparently, according to this article, some fans had a really hard time with all of the callbacks to Rebels and the Clone Wars, as well as multiple cameos and nostalgia. But Bryce Dallas Howard, the phenomenal director, has hit back at this, and she's said the following. I think it's a really fine balance, of course. As an actor, I'm familiar with those kinds of questions because, for example, with working in the Jurassic Park franchise, it's like, okay, we can have fun with some deep cuts for the fans. But at the end of the day, it's about a good story. Well told. I would liken that as well to The Mandalorian in that there are these stories of characters that exist, but even though they might not be playing a central role, constantly in stories there are new characters. But in this one, what is cool is if you are a super fan, you'll actually be caught up and will have an understanding of the various layers of the scene. I think to not connect The Mandalorian in any shape or form, especially with Dave Filoni's collaboration, it would personally feel like a missed opportunity. As a fan, when I see Dave's name on something, I want the storytelling to be that much richer. And I believe that she is absolutely right. I really hope you enjoyed my news update, guys. And if you did, please be sure to give me a big fat like, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. And I'm wishing you a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.